Alright, so people were asking me to try it out. So here it is. Green Freya on the snake boss. So Green Freya, right? Technically should be better than Red Freya on the snake boss because they both have the same holy relic. And the effect is the same. In the in the snake boss, I'm gonna read it off so I don't miss anything. In the snake boss. Uh, her single target skills remove stuns, so this is where the this is the part where you know makes her better, because she has two single targets. So she can if you get really unlucky and you don't get a single target for Red Freya, but you really want to remove a stance, that can be a problem. But both her cards can be stance removal, and increases all stats of of allies by four percent every time she uses skills, up to five times. Uh, she's goddess, and if all are goddess, then each. Godless allies increases attack related stats by 10%. So the reason why I picked the team that I picked uh, was I went with goddesses for me to get the whole scope of the holy relic uh, with the attack related stats. Right now, with Freyr's holy relic, it's actually pretty good to run this boss with full Ragnarok. So I could have gone on a full Ragnarok route, but I feel like if you are going to go on a full Ragnarok team on this boss, you might as well then use Red Freya. Because Red Freya's passive actually gets more attack related stats per Ragnarok ally. So, you know, in that regard, I felt like. Although she, she still lacks on having the two single targets, you know? Or not having the two single targets like the green one does. Regardless of it, you know, if I was gonna go a full Ragnarok team, I would go with the Red Freya. Uh, but yeah, this ca this character also has Pierce card, which is good for taking down the bars. It's not that now, you know, after the boss has been changed to being more reasonable. Uh, <laughs> it's not as big of a drastic change. A regular card to a Pierce card from taking down the bar percentages on, fl on floor 3 especially. But... It, there's a difference, right? The only problem I have with this Freya, running this boss that I had, was in the third floor, phase two, you are punished for removing stances. And it becomes a huge problem when both of her cards are stance removal, right? And then Miles ultimate stance removal. I have too much stance removal on my team. To the point where that phase can, can be a little long and annoying, but it's fine, you know, still beat it. Relatively easy was my first try. I do reset the game, and you, you see me resetting the game very often. I don't find resetting the game to be that annoying. You know, if I know I could have done a better turn, I just reset the game. And I, I encourage that, you know, it's better to reset the game than to reset the whole thing. Because you lost because your turn wasn't that good. And, you know, for the ones that don't know, if you... Pause your game. You don't have to actually pause, but I, I like to pause the game. Make sure. But if you just close the game before the enemy turn starts, you can reset that turn you just had. So if, let's for, say for example, you leave the enemy with like a tiny bit of health, or, you know, that phase of the enemy with a tiny bit of health, then you can restart and try different cards and see if that, that will kill. I find that to be an extremely useful tool that now I know actually works in Hero Arena, by the way. So, it didn't work before, because your arena was treated as PvP. So dumb. <laughs> it was treated as PvP. Now it's not anymore, it actually works in Hero Arena. So, uh, I'll try that out, and if you are gonna play Hero Arena, which you should, uh, when it comes back to Global, you should also give that a try, so you can, uh, you can have a better time completing the higher difficulties. Regardless of it, I find that now, running the Goddess team, after having completed this with Ragnarok for the past two weeks, uh, Goddess team is a little bit better. The only thing that really sucks for the Ragnarok team is that I find that you have to use Red Megalda, right? And Red Megalda just kind of sucks. <laughs> and she kind of sucks for what she does. She's a good unit, there's a reason why you're using her, right? But she's like the healer of the team. And she only heals if you have, like, debuffs on you. And in floor 3, a lot of the time, you don't. So, yeah, so yeah, reset right there. So, like, Liz, she heals with her card. 
and she heals you for ultimate, gives you ult gauge. Like, Liz is just such a better unit, which is crazy. Because Liz came out with the game, practically. She was the first better ever. Crazy. And it's not even like... I mean, the Holy Relic helps her as well. 15% extra HP is nice. It's really nice for your team. But, yeah, I just, I just find that having played both teams now... If I am to just do a completion... Like, real quick, I find Goddesses should be more pleasant because of the healer situation. But the other characters, man, DPS-wise, like, Tyr and Freya are so good. They're way better than Freya and Mayal. I only say that, you know, Freya technically could go in the Ragnarok team, but you can't really use her in the Ragnarok team because you need a buff removal. Like, you actually need, need, need a buff removal. You cannot complete Flourish without a buff removal. And that team doesn't have a buff removal, so you have to, like, pick a random character that has one. So, unfortunately, that's, that's not another unfortunate thing for the Ragnarok team. Like, Tyr blows Mael out of the water in, in terms of damage. The only thing Mael has over him is that at 6-6, six, six, those gray debuffs that lower enemy damage are pretty clutch. Like, it's really nice having that damage lower. But that's, that's about it. I guess the stance removal part is neat, but like I mentioned... You know, in the floor 3, having so much stance removal is annoying. And to be honest, running Ragnarok, I never felt like I needed, like, the stance removal that often. Freer can... Freer is, like, enough stance removal for me. But, you know, again, because, because of the healer situation, I have preferred now running Goddess again. Goddess pl plus Freya, right? <laughs> Not a full Goddess team, really. Oh, and, yeah, no, uh, no blue... What's her face? Fake, fake Liz, whatever her name is. Uh, I have opted for Margaret. I saw this team on Twitter yesterday. Uh, said some Japanese. I, I get a lot of like Japanese players recommended to me on Twitter. Thankfully, like my Twitter page has been garbage for a while, but I I, of, I often enough still get recommended a lot of Japanese players, and they always post like some neat strategies for stuff like Hero Arena, uh, Demonic Beast stuff like that. Especially when a new character comes out. Saw a guy uh, completing it with uh, Freya. Not a video or anything, so I didn't have any guidance to follow. I just kind of was like, I just trusted him. Okay, he did it with Margaret. Must be good enough. And Margaret's nice because the cleanse um, and damage increase, damage reduction. But if you prefer running with Blue Elat, I remember her name. If you prefer running with Blue Elat, just use Blue Elat. If it's more comfortable for you, if you can't tank as much, uh, use her over Margaret. Margaret will make it... I guess a tad bit faster. It's not really that much faster. The basic stab boosting is nice. And especially because now it works. It, I'm pretty sure Freya was bugged and wasn't getting stab, buff, uh, stab buffed by Margaret when it first uh, dropped, but eventually got sorted out. The basic stab boosting is nice. I just I just liked uh, running like this. It's a bit faster as well. But the Elite is more safe. Safer option with the increased defense related stat buff although now blue elat you can use her 1-6 and you should be fine elat at 1-6 gives you 100 percent and at 6-6 six, six gives you 150 yeah 1-6 one, one, is good enough yeah that, that's nice 1-6 is good enough but having blue elat for some people might be tough considering <laughs> considering she uh she's like a of seasonal character. I hate that they release so many seasonal characters. And they just dropped one. But I know it is summer, fair enough. But they dropped so many seasonal characters for no reason. Like so many... Like Zeldra. Zeldra's a seasonal character for no reason. I wish they would just drop more uh, SSR characters. SSR banner characters. Hasn't been much uh, in a while. As a floor 3 is the one that takes the longest. Because of these gauges and stuff. And... They toned them down, they made the gauges much better, but it's still... If you get unlucky with your cards especially, in the in this floor I kind of messed up a bit, but then I got pretty lucky with the cards, so it took a little bit longer than it should have. Like, I, I don't want to waste an ult on this phase when I can open the next one with it, right? But kind of have to, to get the gauge down. It's better now, though. Like, honestly, like, pre-patch, this boss was not worth playing. Because it just took so long. 
it was always my my thing where like i don't want to waste upwards to two hours playing this boss when i could just do anything else anything you know i'll i'll play floor one and two they're fine floor three was just too much it was just it, there was just it was too long and this phase is too long like you can't remove his stance or you get penalized for it by increasing the bar I mean, you can, and I do, right? Which is why it ended up going a little longer. And I do, but it's like when you have Freya, for example, that has two stance removal cards, then what? You can't attack with her? You just, you just can't because you get penalized for it. It's pretty annoying. Like the boss was designed around being super, super, super annoying. And although we technically have a character for it, which is Freya, Sure, I guess. And still, yeah. Luckily, you saw it in my hand. I, I was getting no Freya cards, which is good for this phase. But here, I had to choose a Mile card to remove the the taunt. And this is where it starts going up on the bar, and you have to deal with it. So annoying. <laughs> so annoying. Having to deal with this bar for no reason. This phase could have been better. By just not, not punishing ults to remove stands like Miles ult, because I just I want to I mainly want to use Miles ult to do damage and to you know apply the damage lower, but then it gets penalized. And here I'm getting a lot of Freya cards. It's like oh my god, the Freya is gonna remove the stands and I have to I have to remove the stands again because he got another counter. This phase is awful. <laughs> This phase is just awful, but you know, is what it is. I was thinking of ways I can uh, deal with it, but ended up actually removing the stance to not get countered. And that goes up my bar again. Although I could have dealt with it if I were removing, I just have to take some damage back. But I was kind of concerned on taking damage on some of these characters. Because even though, you know, my characters are pretty tanky, like, he targets Freya a lot. Even though he's not supposed to. Maybe this Freya is bugged still. Maybe she's not getting basic stats from, from Margaret. Because technically, I have my Liz with the lowest HP by a long shot. So she should always be targeted. Let's just change my approach here. She should always be targeted. I did <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just gonna make a level 3 for space. Then I realized, oh shit, the level 2 from this remove stance. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. It'd just be like that. It'd just be like that. Uh, this boss still... Like, if not for a video, I, I, like, last week, I didn't do floor 3. Because I just can't be asked. I much prefer... Like, I, I will go outside and stare at the sun over doing this floor three. Honestly. But you know, it's not like it's that hard anymore, thankfully. I was hoping I was hoping he would a life steal. So you see I reset like seven times here. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. So long as you as I beat it, right? So long as I beat it and I didn't have to restart from the beginning. Reset as many times as you need to. Because I, I was thinking okay Fur is gonna do enough damage so I just you know and she didn't. So I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Freya. Level 2 will do then. Alright, I get it. It's alright. It's alright, this is near the end of the video. Yeah, I agree, Freya is technically better than Rather Freya. Especially because she is a single target. That's, uh, that's the... That's all there is to it, really. That's the only difference. Her passive doesn't work. Neither does Red Freya's passive, right? Because you're not using a Ragnarok team. But that's if you're, you're not, not using a Ragnarok team. If you are using a Ragnarok team... Honestly, this Freya might still be better. Not, you know, the other one's getting attack related stats, but... This Freya might still be better. Like, two single targets. The main difference will be... Red Freya's dupes are much easier to acquire, right? If you've pulled Red Freya from SR tickets, which, good job. But if you, you know, if you pulled Red Freya from SR tickets, then hey man, that's free dupes there. 
And the dupes matter, like the, the ult matters. So if you're gonna use this for it and you have a 1-6, but you have red for it at like, I don't know, 4-6, uh, Red Freya might be worth considering for Ragnarok. Uh, that is considering just Ragnarok team. Goddesses, I think it's a no-brainer. Green Freya is just better. It's, it's a no-brainer for Goddesses. But for un for unknown, I guess Ragnarok. For for Ragnarok, then you might consider. You might consider which one has more dupes. If they're both one six, then Green Freya clears. Is this enough reason to summon for Green Freya? Eh, people already have enough reason by just looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> just looking at her. So, you know, <laughs> using her in activities is a bonus, really. Her being decent at all is a bonus, as uh, as it seems. So, okay. I'm just gonna, just gonna be here until the game plays done. I wish I had a cleanse card here, you know. Margaret, um, Margaret could get cleansed at any point in time. She decides not to when I have 17 ignites. Another good thing about Freire, it doesn't allow your team to be ignited. You know, one thing that's kind of annoying about Freire, which I didn't realize would be eventually a problem. <laughs> Green Askener, right? So Green Askener has an has a ignite card, but every time you face an unknown team, they have Freire. And Freire doesn't allow you to ignite them. Kind of annoying. See right there? Yeah. I don't see. I, I don't. I don't think Margaret passive is working on Freya because, like, he should not have been attacking Freya right there. I attacked her twice to life steal. I should have saved him my ultimate. Right here is my my mistake. I should have. This should have been done. Like, it should have been done. Next turn should have been it. But uh, I should have saved my ultimate. Only used Freya to heal with her. But you know, I, I think she is bugged because. It should not happen. Like, he should not be singling out Freya when Liz has way less health. Way, I mean way less health. <laughs> she has, I think, like 60,000 less health or, or something like that. Like like, like 50, 60,000 less health. So, it should not happen. But, you know, it is what it is. When she's already kind of low, right, like, like right now, it makes sense. But when they're both fresh, it makes no sense. So... I don't know. I don't know if this Freya wasn't already preemptively fixed like Red Freya was. Because again, Red Freya was bugged. And she Margaret Passive didn't work on her because she didn't count as a goddess. Uh in in, in Margaret's eyes, she didn't count as a goddess, right? I guess Margaret's a bit of an elit elitist. She was like, no, relic is not good enough. And to be born with it. But I don't know, maybe they didn't, didn't preemptive, preemptively do it, or maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just not in my right mind. Anyways, that's 4-3. Yeah, she, she's good. 